Now, the African Development Bank says regional and global shocks in 2016 slowed the pace of growth in Africa, but signs of recovery will manifest in 2017, and the bank projects growth for the region to accelerate to 4.1 this year. With CNBC Africa's Frederick van der Weyver caught up with Abebe Shimelis, the acting director of Research, Networking and Partnership Division at the African Development Bank, to discuss the projections. The African Economic Outlook 2018, we just released, reports that in 2017, Africa grew at 3.2 percent. And we expect next year and uh, 2019, the continent's average GDP growth uh, will be 4.1 percent. So this is much better than 2016 and even 2015, when the commodity price collapse led to slow growth uh, in many parts of the continent, uh, but we believe uh, this uh, resilience uh, of African economies, uh, despite small recovery in commodity prices, uh, indicates uh, there has been much more factors than commodity prices explaining uh, this recovery and growth uh, resilience. And among this increase in terms of economic growth, which are the countries that are leading the march? This year, um, the uh, ten uh, among the ten top uh, fast-growing African economies, you will find, of course, in the East Africa, Ethiopia, and Rwanda. But uh, a bunch of them are in West Africa: Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, uh, Ghana, uh, and Burkina Faso. Um, so uh, this year, uh, actually, West African countries seem to be leading the pack. Uh, among the 10 fast-growing uh, African countries. And among those countries, if you have to pick one, what were the, the reasons for, for, the, for the growth? Yes, I mean, if I uh, pick um, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, where we are, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you have, uh, it is for the last uh, three or four years, the economy has been really growing fast. Uh, partly it is uh, investment, uh, public investment in infrastructure. Uh, partly it's also the recovery of the uh, uh, cocoa uh, sector, uh, but also improving services. Um, mm -hmm. The country's banking sector is now booming, um, uh, uh, and, and uh, the hotels, uh, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, new, uh, new hotels are being uh, introduced. Uh, construction uh, is employing a large number of people. Uh, so there is a lot of optimism in uh, the Ivorian economy. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are still a lot of key challenges in terms of infrastructure, mm -hmm. like electricity, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. transport, etc. How are the progresses have been made in the, in the past year? Yes, um, uh, in, in Africa, uh, I think uh, you have, uh, uh, we have heard the president mentioning mm -hmm. uh, Africa's uh, resilience mm -hmm. and economic performance has been unprecedented since the last two decades. Mm -hmm. However, the most important is this is just the beginning for this continent. Mm -hmm because it is coming from a very long drawn economic collapse in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, the capital stock, which I talked about in the presentation uh, for Africa has been completely lost during those periods and it has been growing very slowly, even as we speak. Mm -hmm. So as a result, um, the complex and uh, perhaps most difficult part of Africa's uh, challenge now, which I agree with the president, is to record double digit growth. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, all the sustainable development goals that have been set, uh, fast reduction in poverty, and generating jobs for the 12 million young people who join the labor force every year, uh, becomes very difficult. So to rise up to that challenge, technology and industrialization uh, becomes important, which takes you back to developing skills. Our higher education, uh, vocational education, and those that equip the young people 
uh, with the uh, uh, know-how uh, to operate and understand the, the, the technology that is evolving uh, becomes important. And I want to add to that also, you know, what the president mentioned about artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. It's very much worrying. In the next few decades, if you go to a restaurant and you are served by a robot, the potential for low-skill labor to be employed globally becomes a mm -hmm. very serious issue. So that is where I think uh, African leaders uh, must take a hard look at where they want to go and how to accelerate, speed up, and raise the level of uh, growth uh, that is also inclusive. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, in, in, to come back to infrastructure, I mean, yes. what is very original in this report is that you came with a new estimate yes. in terms of the, Afri of the infrastructure of finance needs. Can you elaborate on, on that and what is the figure? Uh, in the, uh, up, up until this report, yeah. Uh, the known number that has been cited everywhere is 94 billion uh, US dollars. But in this report, we have re-estimated the current need mm -hmm. for the African continent to meet its infrastructural needs is 130 to 170 billion US dollars every year. And of this, only half of it has been now invested mm -hmm. last year in 2016, uh, investment in African infrastructure was 60.2 billion. So this is, uh, you could see, uh, much lower than what's needed. So there is a gap of about uh, 60 to 100 billion uh, that needs to be met in order to uh, uh, meet Africa's uh, multi-sector requirements in infrastructure. That includes roads, mm -hmm. that includes water, that includes electricity, uh, power. That also includes communication, ICT. Uh, so uh, the, the, this report has made a very strong point that Africa needs uh, much more than it used to be uh, believed in the mm -hmm. past. It's also mentioned in the report that there's a lot of money available globally. Yes. But are you gonna, how is Africa going to attract the billions needed to to meet this to yeah. meet the, the, the gap. Yeah, uh, I mean you are very, I mean you are absolutely right. Um, uh, they call it the saving glut. Mm -hmm. uh, globally, uh, net saving of hundred trillion worth of uh, billions uh, trillions of uh, dollars um, are in the hands of pension funds, sovereign wealth funds, uh, because uh, uh, developed countries and even emerging countries uh, have been able to have surpluses. Now, when you think of it, it's very sad that this uh, size of uh, resource, $100 trillion, is earning negative interest rates to the uh, owners, to the countries and the people who save this. When Africa can provide a higher returns to this investment, and still also provide an opportunity for Africa to transform itself. So, it would have been a win-win for the developed countries who are saving uh, such a huge um, amount of uh, money. Uh, they will be able to get a very good and decent return. Uh, but for Africa also, uh, it provides it an opportunity to once again resurrect its economy. Now, why is this mismatch? As tragic as it may be, uh, there is also sound financial reasoning behind mm -hmm. it. Uh, the president of the African Development Bank mentioned earlier, because there are no uh, infrastructure projects that do not have asset grades. So if I'm an investor and who have no clue about Africa's in quality of infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, even if uh, the project may be uh, extremely uh, of high grade uh, that can provide high returns, uh, this information asymmetry, the risk he has mentioned, the president, uh, perceived risk actually uh, that investors feel about Africa in general and specific projects in particular, um, uh, prevents them from channeling this money mm -hmm. to the continent. So this is where uh, the president also mentioned the role of the African Development Bank is to dispel this fear 
risk mm -hmm. by the financial sector on Africa's infrastructure projects so that we find a mechanism by which um, high quality infrastructure investments are generated by countries so that they have financial viability, uh, not only development viability, and also they will be graded according to the risk involved and the horizon of time uh, they generate yield. So uh, there is a lot of work to do to create that financial infrastructure um, to channel uh, this uh, huge saving uh, that's available globally into the infrastructure sector in Africa. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned as well, it's, it's also about creating and developing the right mm -hmm. infrastructure mm -hmm. that will then exactly. translate itself in inclusive growth. Yes. Uh, I, I think, again, uh, not every infrastructure, actually, if you want to use the president's expression, there is a good, uh, a bad and ugly infrastructure project. Mm -hmm. Sorting this and convincing African governments uh, and private sector uh, to prioritize and always pick the good infrastructure projects is our job, both in terms of providing the technical knowledge what does it mean, uh, high quality, good infrastructure? I mean, it's not uh, automatically clear uh, for anybody. Uh, you, you need, of course, the uh, technicians, the engineers, um, who, who, who have knowledge about the uh, physical nature of the infrastructure. You need economists mm -hmm. and financial analysts uh, to provide you an estimate, okay, if you put X billion of dollar uh, in hydropower in certain parts of Africa, barring the risk, etc., it would be able to generate X number of uh, millions of dollars every year. Uh, so, so all kinds of financial sustainability analysis, particular to a project, but also uh, in terms of protecting the investors. I mean, what regulations do we have uh, from the government's point of view that commits them to pay back the resources they borrowed from sovereign funds. Those types of guarantees have to be created somehow. So regional, international, financial institutions have to engage African governments uh, to help them create the regulatory framework to provide grades for the different types of uh, infrastructure projects so they have an asset class that investors will be comfortable with. But also we need the uh, support of developed countries mm -hmm. um, to, to, to assist in this process. That was Abebe Shimeles, the Acting Director of Research Networking and Partnership Division at the African Development Bank.